So to the surprise of no one, Russia has pivoted away from blaming solely Ukraine for executing this drone incident over the Kremlin to now looping the United States in, saying attempts to disown this both in Kyiv and in Washington are of course absolutely ridiculous. We know very well that decisions about such actions, about such terrorist attacks are made not in Kyiv but in Washington. That comes from Dmitry Peskov who is a Kremlin spokesperson. He went on to say the United States was undoubtedly, emphasis on undoubtedly and I'll tell you why in a minute, he said the United States was undoubtedly behind the incident and added that Washington often selected both the targets for Ukraine to attack and gave them the means to attack them. He's saying this without evidence, and that's why I question this word undoubtedly. It's all rhetoric. The reason he's saying this without a complete package of evidence is because he said in this very same interview that an urgent investigation is still underway and that any response would be carefully considered and balanced. So the investigation isn't done. The White House has come out with their national security spokesman, John Kirby, by, and rebutted Peskov's claims by saying, I can assure you that there was no involvement by the United States in this. Whatever it was did not involve us. We had nothing to do with this. The United States does not encourage or enable Ukraine to strike outside its borders. He, he went on to say that they're still unclear what exactly happened at the Kremlin, and they're still assessing the situation. So why would Russia pivot away from blaming solely Ukraine to now looping the United States in? Well, they learned what a lot of us were talking about. This is embarrassing for Russia. Whether they misjudged what potentially could have been a false flag, or it was actually Ukraine, or even the United States, I don't know. The reality is, when they immediately fired off that it was solely Ukraine responsible for this, it sowed fear and doubt within their population. And that is something they cannot have. There's an old saying that a dictatorship is stable until it isn't. Such fear and doubt uh, when it comes to not being able to protect your own capital building, protect your people, they start wondering if you can protect your people. So the reality for the United States, though, is there's just better strategic targets out there, ones that uh, affect the war effort and could hurt Putin far more than blowing up what looks like a Molotov cocktail over the top of the Kremlin. You have bridges, you have fuel depots, you have rail lines, you have the actual military assets. So the U.S. conducting this type of uh, operation is is quite silly to me. I mean, it frankly looks like a quadcopter, a larger quadcopter carrying uh, flammable liquid like a Molotov cocktail or something like this, meaning it could have been an internal partisan or it could have been disaffected veterans coming back from the war in Ukraine because that are angry because they were treated so poorly, they were lied to, they were not given the compensation they were promised, and now they have the means and the anger and the history of violence so they can create carry it out on potentially the the kremlin itself and that's just one in a long list of organizations and countries that don't like russia i mean you have georgians you have moldovans you have uh, still angry chechen rebels that haven't totally bought into the the new route of chechnya following russia so there are plenty of organizations, plenty of countries out there that could have executed this, or it could have still been a false flag. I mean, uh, I watched this video yet again, and it's interesting because the first, the first drone strikes pretty, pretty uh, on target on the dome. The second drone flies past the flagpole and explodes on the backside of the drone of the dome of the Senate Palace. Interestingly, it's almost like they're trying to avoid the two people walking up the stairs. It's like the second drone was coming in. The drone operator was like, oh crap, there's people on there, flew past, blew it up on the backside, keeping those people in relative, out of relative danger. I don't know if that's the case, but um, it's just all very strange. It's very strange. But the bottom line is, even if Ukraine did conduct this attack, Russia is not immune. They invaded Ukraine. Russia doesn't get this immunity bubble around them where they can attack the capital of Ukraine, and Ukraine cannot attack the capital of Russia. That's not how it works. You, If you want to start a war with your neighbor, you need to expect that your neighbor is going to attack you in your country. It's very silly for Russia to think that this is a terrorist attack. No, if Ukraine carried this out, and hell, if the United States helped them carry this out, this is the part of the equation where you find out, where you effed around, and now you're finding out. But again... 
if the United States really wanted to strike any target in Russia, it could. It hits a button, and 45 minutes later, that target is likely gone. The U.S. doesn't want to escalate this into a war between two major powers, or the Europeans and uh, Russia with the United States backing. Well, the Europeans getting backing from the United States. So I just don't think the Kremlin, being as sensitive a target as it is, is something that the United States would absolutely go after. I highly doubt the Ukrainians would as well. But again, I'm not sure if the Kremlin would conduct such a false flag operation as well because it is embarrassing for them. So there is potential that it could be partisans or angry vets or internal strife that has happened before in Russia. This, these types of things have taken place. We have seen uh, various domestic attacks within Russia over the last year on some of their Ministry of Defense buildings, on fuel depots, even some assassinations being carried out. So this is not uncommon. And that the reason they can't come out and say it was a domestic internal terrorist attack is because once again you have to present your country as perfect they can do no wrong they can everything is going great and this we're winning the war and, and and whatnot so because of that even if it was an internal uh partisan attack or an internal domestic terrorism act or someone who doesn't like russia internally they're still going to blame ukraine and probably the united states doesn't matter so that's where we're at right now, but we all kind of predictably saw that they were going to pivot to the United States as the mastermind of this.